Hey everyone, with Halloween just around the corner, you're probably decking out your house with spooky decorations. But what if you could take it to the next level by creating your own custom Halloween themed dashboard to control your home automations, just like this one. It's easier than you might think, and in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make your home assistant dashboard perfectly spooky for the season. Let's dive in. Let me start by telling you that you can use this dashboard to automate your Halloween props with smart devices. For example, I'm using a Sunoff Mini to light up a bulb inside a pumpkin. But that's not all. You can also control any smart devices you already have in your home, giving them a creepy Halloween twist. And that's exactly what we'll be doing here today. And don't worry, this is easier than it looks. Let's get started. The first step to giving your home assistant a spooky Halloween vibe is switching it to dark mode. Here's how to do it. Head to the lower left corner of your screen and click on your profile icon. In the profile settings, scroll down to the theme section. Then, simply select the dark option from the theme choices. Now, your dashboard is starting to look a lot more Halloween ready. Next, we need to prepare home assistant to handle the necessary files by creating a new folder. Here's how. Open the file editor and click on the folder icon. Scroll down to find the www folder at the bottom. If you don't see this folder, you'll need to create it. Once created, restart Home Assistant. This folder is essential for accessing the images we'll need. Once inside the www folder, click the new folder icon, name it Halloween, and click OK. Now let's move on to setting up our dashboard. Go to the Overview tab and click the Edit Pencil in the top right corner. Click the plus icon to create a new view. In the View Configuration pop-up, select an icon. I'm choosing the Halloween icon for this demo. Set the view type to Panel, and then hit Save. And there you go, we now have a blank canvas ready to start building our spooky Halloween dashboard. Now, I'm going to show you how I created the images for this dashboard. But if you don't feel like making your own, don't worry, I'll make mine available for you to use, so you can recreate this dashboard exactly as I'm doing it. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to the channel, it's free, and it really helps. To create my images, I used some help from AI. I used Leonardo AI, but feel free to use any image generator you prefer. After a few tries to get the right look, I settled on this version and made a few tweaks to get it just right. Now, we need to create some variations of the image to make the dashboard interactive. You can use any image editor like Photoshop or GIMP, but I'll be using Photopea, a free online tool I've covered in other videos. It's a great option if you don't want to install anything. I'll walk you through the process step by step, so it's easy to follow and achieve the result we're aiming for. If you're using the images I'll provide, feel free to skip this part, but if you want to see how it's done, let's dive in. Head to photop.com and drag your image into the drop zone in the middle. If needed, zoom in to work on it more easily. First, we need to desaturate the color in the windows to simulate that the lights are off. Select the lasso tool on the left side of the screen. On the right, right-click the background layer and select Duplicate to create a copy. Use the lasso tool to roughly select around the windows, covering the lit areas. It doesn't have to be perfect, just focus on the parts that are illuminated. With the duplicated layer selected, create a mask by clicking the white rectangle with a gray circle icon. Hide the original layer by clicking the eye icon next to it. Now, only the windows should be visible on the duplicate layer. Now, let's desaturate the windows. Make the background layer visible again by clicking the eye next to it. Create an adjustment layer by clicking the half white slash half gray circle at the bottom of the layers section and choose hue slash saturation. A sliders panel will appear. Drag the saturation slider all the way to the left. This will make the entire image black and white but we only want to apply it to the windows. 
To fix this, right-click the adjustment layer and select Create Clipping Mask. Now the desaturation will only apply to the windows layer below. Great! Now the windows look like they're turned off. The image is now ready to be exported. Go to File in the top menu. Select Export As. Choose PNG. Give your image a name, then click Save. Next, we'll make the lights turn on again, and I've already mapped out how each window will be assigned in the dashboard. These two windows will be Bedroom 1. These three will be the suite. These three will be Bedroom 2. This one will be the living room. This one will be the dining room. And this one will be the kitchen. Now, let's head back to Photopea to create the images with the windows lit up. Go to the adjustment layer you created earlier and click the eye icon to disable it. The windows should turn orange again. Select the lasso tool and start outlining the windows of the room you want. This time, you can circle around the entire window, not just the lit areas. Next, disable the background duplicate layer by clicking the eye icon next to it. Select the original background layer, and with it selected, create a mask by clicking the white rectangle with a gray circle at the bottom of the layers panel. Now, you're ready to export the image. Go to File and select Export As. Choose PNG. Name the file based on the room and click Save. After exporting, go back to the original layer, click on the mask you just created, and delete it. Now, select the next set of windows and repeat the same steps for each room. I won't repeat the process here to keep this video from getting too long. Now that we have our images, it's time for the fun part, creating the dashboard. We'll start by uploading the background image for the dashboard. Open the file editor, click the folder icon, scroll down and open the www folder. Inside, select the Halloween folder, click the upload icon. Choose your background image file, then click OK. Now, let's head back to the Overview tab. Click on the Halloween icon for the view you created. In the bottom right corner, click on Add Card. Scroll down the list of card options and select Picture Elements. A Picture Elements pop-up will appear. Delete the default State Badge element, as we won't need it. Open the card options and replace the existing image path with the path of the image you just uploaded. Once you do this, the image will appear on the right side. Finally, hit save. It's starting to look great! This is the foundation for creating our interactive dashboard. Let's start importing and configuring the room windows to light up based on the lights or switches that are turned on. Open the file editor. Click the folder icon. Scroll down to the www folder. Open the Halloween folder. Click the upload icon and start uploading the images of the windows lit up. I'll speed this part up. Now, click edit to begin configuring the dashboard. Add a new element and choose the conditional element. Add a title for your element. Set up an entity state condition. Select the entity you want to associate with the window image. I'll choose Bedroom. Set the state to On. Next, add a new image element. Select local path or web URL and enter the path to the corresponding room image. In the style box, set the width to 100% to ensure the image covers the entire background and aligns perfectly. Hit save. Now, the lights are still off, but as soon as I turn on my bedroom light, the windows on the dashboard will light up. I love how this is coming together. Now, repeat the previous steps for the remaining room windows. 
you'll need to configure the entities and corresponding rooms for each set of windows you have. The quickest way to do this is by clicking the duplicate icon on the already created element. For example, if I click on the duplicate living room element, I only need to change the title, the entity, and the image path. This will save you time and keep everything consistent. Now, let's upload the switch images that will control all the rooms. I'll be using Halloween pumpkin images as our switches. By now, you're familiar with how to upload images, right? I'll go ahead and upload all these pumpkin images, and I'll also share them with you, so you have everything you need to create this dashboard. All the images are uploaded, so let's head back to the dashboard screen and start adding the switches. Click Edit to begin. Add a new image element. Select the entity for the switch, I'll choose Bedroom. Enter a title to help identify the switch on the screen. When you hover over the image, the title will appear. Set the tap behavior to toggle so you can turn the light on and off. Set the whole behavior to more info. Choose local path or web URL and insert the path of the corresponding pumpkin image. In the style box, adjust the position and size of the image as needed. Hit save. And there you have it, our first pumpkin switch. It's grayed out because the light is currently off. When I click on it, the light turns on, the house windows light up, and the pumpkin changes to orange, indicating the light is on. If I click it again, it turns the light off and the pumpkin goes back to gray. This setup already looks great, and you can leave it as is if you're happy with it. But I want to take it a step further by using one image for when the light is off and a different one for when it's on. Click Edit again. Select the pencil icon to edit the element. In the state image box, enter off, followed by the path to the image for the off state. Hit save. Now, the switch uses one image for the off state and a different one for the on state. Clicking the switch will not only turn the light on or off, but also change the image accordingly. It adds a nice touch of interactivity. Now, let's add the rest of the switches. Click Edit. To speed things up, simply duplicate the switch element you've already created. Replace the entity with the next switch you want to add. Update the title for easier identification. If you want to use a different pumpkin image, replace the image path. I'll go ahead and replace mine. Also, update the off image path to match. Adjust the position of the image in the style box to fit where you want the switch to appear. You should now see another pumpkin on the dashboard. Hit the back button and repeat these steps for all the remaining switches. Once you've finished configuring everything, click Save. Here are all the switches I've set up so far, and they're working perfectly. When I turn the switches on, the lights come on, and the house windows light up on the dashboard. But I'm not happy with the position of the pumpkins, so I'll quickly adjust them. There we go, that looks much better. Now, I want to add the temperatures for my bedrooms in the bottom left corner of the dashboard. If you have temperature sensors, you can do this too. Click Edit. Add a new state label element. Select an entity. I'll choose Bedroom Temperature Sensor. In the Prefix field, add a name to identify the room. Set the tap behavior to nothing. Set the whole behavior to more info. In the style box, I'll configure the position, color, font, and add a shadow effect. I'll include this configuration in the description below so you can copy it if you'd like. Hit save. Now we have the temperature for the first room. To add the remaining sensors, simply duplicate the element and update the entity and position for each one.
Now, I've got all the bedroom temperatures displayed, and it really adds a nice touch to the dashboard. In the meantime, I've added another switch on the right side of the dashboard to control the living room light. Now, let's add another sensor that I find useful, a motion sensor. I'll configure an element to display an image whenever the front door sensor detects motion. Click Edit. Add a new conditional element. Enter a title, I'll use someone at the door. Set up an entity state condition. Choose the sensor entity you want to use. Set the state to detected. Add an image element. Set both tap behavior and hold behavior to nothing. Choose local path or web URL and enter the path to the image you want to display. I'll share this image as well if you want to use it. In the style box, adjust the position and size to your preference. Since no one is currently at the door, you won't see the image yet. Hit save. The dashboard looks unchanged because no motion has been detected at the front door, but as soon as someone approaches, a witch will appear. And there you have it, a completed Halloween dashboard. Here's what it looks like on the iPad. It looks even better on an iPad or tablet, where you can control everything, like your pumpkins, with just a tap. And there you have it, our spooky Halloween-themed Home Assistant dashboard is complete. From custom pumpkin switches to lighting up windows and even a motion-activated witch, we've added some fun and interactive elements to control your home automations. I hope this video helped you add a festive touch to your smart home setup. If you found this guide helpful or learned something new, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing more tips, tutorials, and creative ideas to enhance your smart home experience. Thanks for watching.